Hello everybody, it's Susan with Pumpkin Hill Stampers. Uh, it's Friday, and often on Friday when I do a stamp and show and tell, I do what I call a case that card episode. Today we are going to case this card. I'm sure you've seen it on Pinterest, where they make this really cute uh, porcupine. And so often I will pick a card that I like the design of and show you how I sketch it out, and then we make a different card with a different set. But I actually really want to make this porcupine, so we're actually going to case this card, meaning copy and selectively edit it. So follow along as I show you how we can make this cute porcupine and we'll come up with a card very very similar. Alright, so they use Painted Harvest as the stamp set to make the porcupine. Uh, we're going to do that as well. I have already gone through my stamp room and found some colors that I thought would work well together. I've got Pear Pizzazz, Garden Green, Crumb Cake, and some very vanilla and they had used the stitched framelit squares to stamp their porcupine on, so I'm going to go ahead and do that too. I already knew, because I use these all the time, that I would use a 3x3 mounting square on this square of stitched framelit. So I've done that to save us a little time so I can show you how to case this porcupine. And then I've also chosen to use um, the Pinewood Planks uh, embossing folder to create this piece in the back. So first let's talk about the sketch a little bit. So this sketch is a pretty basic card. So we've got um, a five and a half by four and a quarter card. Okay, so that would actually be five and a half by eight and a half and then they score it to fold it in half to four and a quarter. Then they have this border in the back. Okay, um, So if this is a four and a quarter card and it's showing about a third, I would guess that this is maybe a one and three quarter inch border. But you're just looking for a strip to come across. So whatever width border you want to put on your card you can use. Um, they use designer series paper. I'm going to do an embossing folder to create a background, but it doesn't matter what you use, whatever stamp set you're using or whatever colors you're using, find something that's good to coordinate and tie in. Um, and so that would be, I'm going to say that's about one and three quarters, and that would be by five and a half to come all the way across your card. Okay, I've already told you that this inside square for me is going to be three by three, because when I use my stitched framelit square, I know it comes out to be about two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And then they just have three of the leaves that we're going to use from the Painted Harvest set with our leaf punch. So that's pretty easy to case. Okay? So I'll have all the details when I do the blog post below in color photos um, of how I put this card together. But it's a pretty easy one if you want to mimic it. So let's go ahead and stamp that porcupine, which is really what I want to show you how to case today. So I'm going to put that up there as reference. So I'm bringing in my Berry Vanilla. Okay, I've chosen Crumb Cake Soft Suede as my two browns. So what you do is, with the lighter color and the larger sunflower from the set, I'm going to ink that up. Oh, and we need to, we need to um, cover up part of this, mask off part of this, so that we're only going to end up with half of that circle. So let's see, I'm going to go about there. So you see this is just a piece of um, scrap that I cut that out of. You can also just use post-its. I'm just going to use post-its to hold it down today. So whatever works for you. Okay. So like I said, we're going to stamp. And so you want about half of your circle of the sunflower. I missed a little, so I'm gonna turn it, stamp it again. We'll have a very full porcupine. Alright, so there's that. Then I'm gonna come in with the soft suede, which is a little bit darker brown, and the more detailed stamp. And I'm gonna line up my centers. I'm gonna give that a good press. That's gonna give us the detail on the on the porcupine. Okay, and then before I take my mask off, I'm going to do the center 
in the crumb cake. Make sure I have the right one. Okay, so my center for my little face. There we go. All right, so see, just by, by um, masking that off and stamping, I have half of a sunflower, which makes that porcupine body. That's pretty easy, isn't it? All right, now I'm going to mask it. Um, I'm not going to put words down here. I'm just going to make some green. So I'm going to bring in from this set the fern looking stamp. And I'm going to stamp some ferns. So I'm going to use garden green. I'm going to borrow this stamp block. So I think I'm going to stamp it off as well so that I have some light. So I'm going to stamp it off. And then I'm just going to stamp some fern. So like he's coming through the, the forest, right? They don't all have to be lined up. They don't all have to be stamped off either. And if you want to use a lighter green, you can use a lighter green. And if you stamp multiple times, it will lighten up as you go. All right, so I have my little fern forest there. Uh, while I have this green out, I'm going to go ahead and stamp a couple of leaves that I'm going to punch out. So I'm just stamping green on green, garden green on garden green. I've got a couple pieces of scrap here, so I'm just going to make some leaves. Now you'll notice in their sample they used three. I often will use an odd number of embellishments as well. So I was taught a long time ago that sometimes an odd number of embellishments or an odd number of stamps on a project actually make it look a little more even, so to speak, laid out, so to speak. So. I often follow that tip in my stamping. All right, so now we've got our three little embellishments to work with as well. Now we just need to add his little face. I'm going to use uh, my Early Espresso marker. If you have the Foxy Friends stamp set, you could borrow a face from that as well. But I'm just going to put on two eyes and a nose. Uh, we had black rhinestones in the fall occasions catalog. If you have any of those, they would make really cute eyes as well. So, you do what you have in your stamp room to make it the way you want it. But those are just a few suggestions. Okay, so we've, we've cased the our cute little animal friend here our porcupine. We've made it slightly different, all right? Selectively edit. I'm just going to mount that on the green. All right, keep track of our pieces here. All right, now I'm going to bring the big shot in and I'm going to emboss with my embossing folder my piece of trim. So let me just back up the machine here. So like I said, I chose the wood plank folder and I have a piece of crumb cake here and I'm just going to slide that in like that. This is a thick folder so you only need to use one cutting mat with it to slide it through and get your emboss. So I put that on top and I crank it through. Easy peasy. No even creaks or shrieks today on that one. All right. So I picked that out of my embossing folder. All right, so I've got some wood grain in the background. So now I just gotta put my card together. All right, so here's the one we're working off of. So I have my Pear Pizzazz card. I have my wood plank background that I've chosen to use. So I'm just gonna add that down with my snail. I'm going to slip the card. My my wood plank is about two and a quarter inches wide instead of the one and three quarters that I guesstimated here, but like I said, it's your card. Nine's a little bit long, so what do we do when it's a little bit long? We flip it over and we trim it. So There we go. 
Now we're going to put our porcupine on the front. I'm going to use dimensionals to give that a little lift. Um, two reasons I'm using dimensionals. One, to give it a little lift on the card, but secondly, we're going to add those green leaves, and I'm going to put glue dots on them and slide them behind this mounting square. So by lifting it up, it allows me to do that after I put the square on. I'm going to put it... Yeah, I guess I'll put it right in the center like they did. You can put it off to the side if you want to. Okay, and like I said, I didn't put words in here, but if you wanted to do words, you could just mask it in reverse. Um, or you could add words down here or up there, or you could put a tag on it. I actually think when I use it, I'll probably put a tag on it because it will break up all that green I have in there in my little forest. All right, so I just stick my punched out leaves on my glue dots and I pull them up like stickers. So I'm going to stick one down here. See, I'm just sliding it behind the square. Got one there. Just make sure that those glue dots get tucked behind. Let's see. That one's going to interfere, so I'll just over that, that a little bit. And there we go. We cased the card. So like I said, I'll put all the details of measurements and colors that I used um, and the technique of masking when I do the document that I put in my links below. But look how fast that was. And like I said, you could case this card very easily with any supplies you have in your stamp room. If you've got some gingham paper like they used, or if you've got papers that just coordinate in colors, this little cute porcupine could go on any color card, I think. Um, and I think he's really cute. So I hope you enjoyed uh, learning how to make that cute little porcupine that we're seeing all over Pinterest because he's so stinking cute. And I hope you give it a try. So, as always, gals, I love thumbs up. I like to be appreciated. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want more. Subscribe to my newsletter in the link below, and you won't miss any of the programs that I'm running or videos that I offer up to my my customers and, and my newsletter followers. And, again, all the links for all the details of what I used will be below, so take a peek. Um, and if you're a demonstrator, case it. You can case it. I cased it. That's how we learn. That's how we share. That's how we grow. So thanks, everybody. Hope you have a wonderful Friday, and I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye.